Wondery Plus subscribers can listen to Just Jack and Will early and ad-free. Find Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Sean! Eric! Wait, should we sing our names? Sure. Okay. Sean! Eric! <laughs> That's so stupid. That's so stupid. Why did you think of that idea? That's dumb. <laughs> Sean, I know you love to hear this. We've got a big one to talk about today. It's our first two-parter. We meet Will's brother. Jack is a birthday. The return of touching stomachs. So much to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our guests today will be the creators of the show, the writers of these episodes, actually, too. Max Muchnick and David Cohan. They'll be here together to talk about putting this one together bit by bit. And don't go nowhere. It's just Jack. And will theme song. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Just Jack and Will, the show where Eric. That's the other guy talking. Mm. And I break down an episode of Will and Grace each and every week. But before we get to all that, how are you before feeling? We, well, how am I feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, still on Broadway, though. I had my second bout of freaking COVID. I know. That's crazy. So and apologies and like in a to short all that came. One, yeah, I know. Like within a month of each other. Apologies to all that came to see me. I know my understudy, Tony, did a great job. But uh, I was just sitting at home feeling fine. And unable to go on. So that's it. God damn it. I am back on Broadway for two more months. But someone is not yeah. on Broadway anymore. And, <laughs> a lot of people um, aren't. And the whole Midtown is uh, everyone around Broadway is uh, very aware that Sean Hayes has left the building. Uh, oh, I thought you meant, on, on I thought you meant the Britney Spears musical close. <laughs> Is that what you're <laughs> that there's there's a, not as not, not the same mourning for that as there is for the fact that people are. I, I've heard it now four times. People go, what? Sean, it's over? Oh, I didn't get to see. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was Isn't a few and far between. Everybody saw it. Well, that's very sweet. I, I, uh, it was a great run. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for the support. And now, you know, as I continue to uh, uh, toss the support back to you, please go see The Cottage. Eric is brilliant. And it. it's a fucking great show. <laughs> Laugh my balls off. And everybody in it is so good. It's really well crafted. I can't. Uh, please go see it if you can. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's a good time. Other than that, I am back to gaining weight because when I did the show, I, Eric, you know, I could eat, maybe you could do this too. Yeah. Every night I could eat like a pl plate of spaghetti and a bowl of ice cream and not gain a pound. Yeah. I mean, and even though your show is not physical, physical, you just naturally do the very act of, of getting yourself there, getting yourself up for it. Um, it's, it's true. I was out last night and eating a chicken dinner at 11 o'clock or something. Yeah. Um, and it's fun. That's the part of the fun of Broadway. I love that. Really? What? Just the, the, just the, that, the, the, the athleticism? The, uh, uh, yeah, the athleticism, but also the, just the tradition of, of, you know, I take care of myself all day and I'm quiet except for these podcasts. And then uh, the show. And two hours later, it's like, where are we going for a drink? Where are we eating? What restaurant yeah, are we going yeah. to? Who's it here tonight? Fun. This actually yeah, had the social stuff. It's super I fun. Know. Love it. Um, anyway, so I'm I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm you're back in the show. Super exciting. Um, guess what? Guess what we're gonna do now? What are we gonna, <laughs> are we gonna do? Our, our, are we gonna do our segment called Just Facts? I knew we were. Yes. So the facts of this episode. These are our first double episode, or as we knew them from the from when we were children. Yeah. The To Be Continued episodes. Yes. <laughs> I always remembered that. From, yes. It could have been Brady Bunch or Get Smart, but when it said To Be Continued, it was very special. That's so funny. I didn't even think of that. Like today in streaming or whatever, they don't do that. They just assume you're going to tune into the next episode. Yeah, everything's To Be Continued. And you don't even have to touch anything. They just, you know, take you through it eight seconds later. But right. this idea of leaving it for a week and being told by those little words yes. on the screen, oh, there's more. You yeah, just yeah, have yeah. To come back next week. Very special. Um, but we binged. We did both episodes together. Uh, we are treating this is like Dostoevsky. This is a big, <laughs> long episode of Will and Grace yeah. called Big Brother is Coming. It originally aired February 16th and 23rd, 1999. Yeah. And then you know it's so funny when when you tune in for the second half of a to be continued episode, yeah. they recap the top of it super fast, and you go, yeah. 
oh, well, we could have just told the story in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but again, what I, I, I was very excited because I think when it originally aired, one of us had to record that famous saying yeah. previously I, on Will and Grace, yeah. right? I mean, yes. I, I, I was so exciting to think I'm in a television show where we say things like to be continued and previously on and Will and I love that. Yes, but they always used your voice. They always used yours, it seemed like. Uh, uh, because... Uh, Mine was like, previously, like it was just like <laughs> nails on a chalkboard and yours was luscious and delicious. Uh, but, mine, uh, mine has become more luscious. Back in the day, I, it was more like previously on Will and Grace. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I didn't. I didn't get a chest voice till season five. I didn't get one uh, until a week ago. All right. So the summary <laughs> of this one is determined, determined to mend the relationship. Grace invites Will's estranged older brother, Sam who's fantastic, to no, Jack's birthday that, party, yeah. which he thinks is 29th, but discovers through math somehow uh, is he's 30. Will and Sam's delicate reconciliation is threatened when Grace and Sam have sex. What? Karen helps Jack to deal with turning 30 and also helps Grace to understand why she's so attracted to Sam. Mm hmm. Are we ranked uh, the first episode ranked number 48 when we aired uh, and 46 uh, for their respective nights. But when they were aired together as a double rerun, Right before our season two, September 7th, 99, uh, we scored number 20 for the night. So we were, the the build was happening. Look at that. Very exciting. And as uh, Shawnee mentioned, uh, the creators of our show, David and Max, wrote these episodes. And we, they've both been on the show, but now we have them together. Yes. Very excited. Yes. Very cool. John Slattery. Oh, my God. How great is John Slattery? I know. I... This was back in the day when we were still getting used to the idea that maybe somebody uh, exciting wanted to do our show. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Slattery was so good. We can't talk about the big show that we all know and love him from. Uh, and John wanted to be here uh, with us this week. But yeah. because of the, uh, the uh, SAG strike, uh, we've all agreed to wait for John's appearance, so. Yes, yeah, so I, I, hope he, I hope we get him back on. Also very funny, uh, in, in the first scene uh, that we're about to talk about, John O'Brien as the juicer yeah. salesperson who went on, he's, he's one of those faces you see all the time, Grey's Anatomy, uh, it was on Perry Mason, that very good show on, on like, the company I can't talk about. Um, but also he was in, he came back. I don't know if he was the same, maybe he was the same character on the episode with Hal Linden and Brandon Ruth. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch that later. and go and, and be reminded. I, I don't remember. I know. And we've talked about it before. So by the time we get to it, people will be like, don't do that episode. You've talked about it a hundred times. Right, right. Um, on these days, and this is my favorite part, uh, on these days in 1999, oh my God, that was so long ago, February 16th and 23rd, 1999, the Billboard charts, Britney Spears, hit me baby one more time. That's so good. <laughs> that was number one. I mean, number how crazy. One. And then she became, then she came on the show. I don't know how long after that, but, and then shares, do you believe not, 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 not was on and then monica's <laughs> angel of mine uh which i don't remember you, as much you don't have a monica impersonation <laughs> I don't. I'm, 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 saving it. John. I'm saving it i'm saving it uh the top top movies at the, uh, the box office are payback payback was mel gibson Am was I that the one with the with the with the um they kidnapped his son and was that what it was i think so that was so good uh, movie. people write in and tell us if we're yeah. wrong. Uh, also, She's All That, mm -hmm. starring my dear friend and Perception co-star Rachel Lee Cook. I love that. Um, that was her she, big breakout a freaking all those years ago. She is all that. Uh, Rushmore and the brilliant Shakespeare in Love. Which I just uh, watched for the first time like two weeks ago. Yeah, oh, I never saw it's it. great. Right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. A little, the pace is a little slow, but I like it. <laughs> uh, February 23rd was also the day the original... <laughs> The day the original British version of Queer as Folk premiered on Channel 4. Queer as Folk, that was, I can't believe that was that long ago. It feels like, it, oh, because they rebooted that too just recently, didn't they? Well, I mean, certainly there was the uh, very popular American version that came later. But it's, I'm, it is interesting to realize that as the fluffy and uh, perhaps not so dangerous Will and Grace was, you know, premiering its first season over here. Yeah. Queer as Folk, which was pretty, it was a pretty daring show. Yeah, and, yeah, it uh, was. And uh, when they adapted it for the States, it was pretty daring here, too. So, But, but interesting when things like that happen, right? When the, when our show's out and then they're like another gay-themed show, like like they were starting, people were, it, something was in the air, I guess. I don't oh, know. yeah, absolutely. And the yeah. fact that they're both, I mean, you, you never mistake 
queer as folk for Will and Grace, but uh, they both existed in the same zeitgeist as yeah. uh, as the conversation was changing. For sure. Uh, interesting birthdays on February 16th include my dear friend and also Perception co-star LeVar Burton. Love him. Um, happy birthday, LeVar, in February. Uh, Ice-T, John McEnroe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 1999, February 16th, would have also been Elizabeth Olsen's 10th birthday. Well, that's Good just God. depressing. <laughs> Isn't yeah, that is crazy? Yeah. Um, and then Peter Fonda, Emily Blunt, who I love. Um, and then and then February 23rd, 1999 would have been Dakota Fanning's 5th birthday. Oh, this is just depressing. Yeah, we're going to move on I don't, from that. I don't talk about how young <laughs> everyone was when I was, you know, looking at 40. Um, and sad to note that um, January 24th, uh, just before these uh, episodes aired, uh, had been the last show that Gene Siskel hosted with his partner, Roger Ebert, uh, at the movies. At the oh, end no of way. the episode, he said he was taking a leave of absence from the show for his health. I mean, I remember this. So this was kind of the, the beginnings of the new uh, film reviewing, the way we look at films and listen to reviewers. Um, he took an absence uh, and died from brain surgery complications days before uh, our second part of this episode aired. So, oh, wow. Yes. And Roger since passed, but it was around for quite a long time. So, Remember when uh, Roger Ebert and Oprah Winfrey went on a date? Uh, I do not remember that. How, right. how was that reviewed? <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, anyway, that's what was happening back in 1999. <laughs> and after this quick break, we'll get into everything about brothers and birthdays. It's just Jack. And Will. Hey, hey, no muddy paws and no surprises on the carpet. Klaus von Puppy is clean and housebroken, thank you very much. I wasn't talking about the dog. And here you are working on the toughest case of all, Will versus Life. You've heard. I've heard. Come on, Tiny Dancer, talk to me. I got eyes to see, ears to listen with, and I had to nod knowingly. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Uh, and I you told that. me that's from something? That's from this episode. No. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> That's good. No, I thought that was from like some famous. I got eyes to see, ears to listen with, and I had to. Know oh yeah, well that to me that is uh, that's from uh, Scrooge. That's um, oh yes, he, yes, that's what when it he was. comes in at the end and apologizes to his nephew's uh, new wife and says, "Can you forgive a pig-headed old fool who's had no eyes to see with, nor ears to hear with, all these years?" Oh my God, that's so good. You're so fucking good at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like these two episodes because they feel like mini plays. They're really good. Like, you know? Yeah. I love yeah. Uh, This is the early stages when we haven't met anyone's family yet. So I'm thinking, is this the first? Is this the first? Oh, has Deb- yes. Debbie Reynolds has been on yeah. as the mom, as Grace's mom. We haven't met my parents yet. Um, so I just I just love it. Uh, there's just like little clues uh, that, that come when, when you don't, we didn't know our show was going to run for 11 seasons. So right. w- meeting out these little um, introductions to everyone's past, I love. And the fact that it was yeah. uh, the ridiculously handsome uh, John Slattery uh, playing my brother. Yeah. And awesome. So, so good, man. But we start uh, uh, in a housewares store mm-hmm. uh, with, uh, we're buying a present for, for Jack's surprise birthday, which he has dictated to us is going to happen and is going to be a surprise um, in true Jack <laughs> yeah. fashion. Uh, we do a whole bit. This is this made me laugh, but at the same time, it was like you can just see Deborah and I diving in 120 percent to this bit. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, you know, you know me. I'm always looking back, going, hmm, <laughs> you know, because this. When I think of the style that came later on certain certain, particularly single camera comedy shows, uh-huh. uh, I think, are we just a little big? But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> right, for right. instance, how I say, so good, you could get juice out of Hume Cronin. Cronin. <laughs> I think I said that big. But um, that's really, but it was really funny. It is very funny. I and mean, again, I just, I, I don't always do this, but I, I sometimes I'm so aware of the, uh, the celebrity mentions. In this scene alone, we've got, we've got Hume Cronin. Yep. Uh, Cher. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chaz Bo- Bono, her uh-huh. son. Um Joan, uh, Joan Van Ark, we've got a joke coming <laughs> right. up about. I mean, it's right. amazing. It uh, is kind of amazing. I love, um, 
I love the sh- the sh- the juicer, the Schmankman five thousand juicer, <laughs> because yeah. I I often heard the writers, or maybe it was just Max and David, say the word Schmankman, but I yeah. never knew what it meant. Well, that was a silly, a silly, and also a very silly sort of Jewish name. Like right. the, the two of them, and and Jimmy and Deb, that was always the thing with the Schmankman thing. <laughs> yeah, um, right, made me laugh. And I love the end of the scene because it was so. I want to talk to Max and David about this. The way it's written between Grace and Sam, mm-hmm. at f- for the first five, six, seven lines, oh my God, it's an ex-boyfriend. Right. Then you go, oh no, it's Will's ex-boyfriend. Right. And it's not till the last line that he says, tell him his brother misses him. It's yes. Like, oh, nice blow. Nice I reveal. Know. I know. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, I love the entire scene, the extras are really contemplating buying a blender for the entire seven minute scene <laughs> in the background. They never leave you behind you. Right. And they're constantly shopping and looking. It's hysterical. It's it's a thing that has continued to stay with me for my the whole career, whether it be sitcoms or, or uh, single camera dramas, is I'm very yeah. aware of the extras. Yeah. And it's not, it's something that took me a long time to learn. It's not really the director's, uh, job or right. purview. It's really the first AD uh, th- that has to sort of give them their orders. Right. Uh, the director's not allowed to sort of tell them, <laughs> shop for more things or go and do that. So yeah. it's it's always the first AD that has an eye to those, or sometimes the second has an eye to that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And first I'm, AD I'm, is first assistant director. <laughs> right. And, and, and his or her team. But yeah. I, I when, when you see somebody, the last show I did, it was it was the I think it was the third AD was in charge of the extras, and he was the, he was a maestro. This guy, he just yes. he could make yes. you know twenty people look like eighty people, constantly yeah. moving through the frame, and yeah, um, harder to do in a sitcom. But I know, so it's important. so interesting. All that traffic, all that traffic of the extras. The next scene, we're back into Will and Grace's apartment again, and uh, Grace is uh, baking a cake for Jack, and Karen's drinking a martini. <laughs> Karen, uh, who apparently knows where all the stuff in our kitchen yeah. is, because she yeah. open when when the baking stuff comes up, Karen just with her heel opens the drawer like she always knew that shit was there. That was the mystery of Karen, the things she did know, didn't know, cared about, didn't care about. Yeah, yeah. you never, yeah. never do. Um, some more celebrities, uh, many said in this scene, mm-hmm. Richard, the Richard Simmons. Simmons joke, yeah. of course, Michael Corleone. Well, Michael Corleone's a character. Uh, but, uh, but I did love that reference when, when, uh, when she finally tells me that my brother, long estranged brother was at the store. I'm dismissive and angry. I, I always love this. This is so typical. Will and Grace. I pour myself a glass of wine. Mm. And as soon as I hear the news, I'm like, well, I'm going to the gym. Yeah. Hmm, I'm to the gym on. <laughs> One nice glass of wine. Yeah, uh, I know. I, I love the, the the Corleone forgave Fredo, and then you say, "Yeah, that was right before he had him taken out to the <laughs> lake and shot." Shot. The important thing is he forgave him. Yeah. No, I think the important thing to Fredo, Fredo was, was that he got shot. Shot. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And by the way, the painting over your shoulder of the man's torso is now hanging in my home. Oh, the longer one, not the yeah. not the face, but the longer one. You got the really? face one, right? Well, I got a, a version, a few versions of the face one. I think were copied years later. Yeah. The original face one, I imagine, Max has or something. Oh, probably. Yeah. Um, maybe but, I have uh, a maybe I have a version of it. Yeah. No, the only thing I have is is my that little box from from um, Will's coffee table that has Donny Osmond's questions in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's oh, the only God. thing I took. Um, I love that. Uh, but anyway, so and I love the that, that's what I mean by Karen. The, the end of the thing when when Grace is trying to lay the pipe, as we say, give the audience a little heads up about what the deal is between Will and his brother. Uh-huh. She gets about two lines in. And Karen says, "Honey, I barely care about Will. Can you imagine how I feel about the brother?" <laughs> it's a brilliant line. Yeah, so funny. Um, but yeah, we get that's the that's we get a little bit of that out there where. Um, you know, Grace says, reminds the audience that Will is too honest with Sam about his fiance, Ginny. His fiance, right. That's right. Yeah. So, I, and I was like, we'll talk about this later, but I was like, I don't, I still don't, what's the issue? Like, so, like, I, I guess the issue was, uh, the issue really, I guess, was, yeah, w- Will said something hurtful. Um, right. But then did, did his brother, did Sam not 
want to see Will again because he was angry at Will? Or as time went on and Will's words became a bit prophetic, yeah. uh, did Sam just get embarrassed at like Christmas, as we mentioned him leaving early at Christmas? Or was it the wife saying, I don't want to see your brother, right. he, he called me a bitch. So, I mean, it's, it's good family stuff because it's a simple moment that happened yes. between them. But it led to years of complications. And, right, liked. and that is, that's that's very real, right? Which yeah. I love. Uh, well, that's that makes sense. Um, and then we're at Jack's party. Oh my God, these these I, scenes, <laughs> with, yeah, huge. I love this. So th- we have references to this, I think, throughout the next number of seasons. But Jack seems to know everybody and no one <laughs> at, at the same time. We've got <laughs> we've it's got so twenty five extras in this room. Uh, he's talking sort of, uh, you, you, when you eventually talk, you talk at them. No one wants to toast you or right. seems to know anything about you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Larry, funny. Eventually, you know, we'd have, you know, Larry and Joe. So at least, the, the, I think that might even be the next time we have a party scene in, in the apartment there. Yeah, yeah. Representing. But this is just completely extras who don't yeah. move. Right. Who sort of smile and uh, all seem to have been dragged off the street. Right. But uh, at the dining was, table is Bar- uh, Max Muchnick's friends, Barry and then David. on the Oh, right. And, right. Barry and often came. They'll to the appear show, yeah. in a lot of episodes in the background for people who want to have a, where- a Where's Waldo kind of moment. Yeah. It um, was the fun. It was the fun of a sitcom is that if a friend came and you or not you necessarily, but Max or David wanted to put them on screen, wasn't such a big deal because it was maybe 40 minutes tops they'd be there. But, you know, when I made the same mistake putting my parents in an episode of uh, Lonesome Dove years ago, and it was they were dressed in period garb. It was a big picnic scene by the church. Yeah. And after the director yelled cut, they were like, oh, that was so much fun. I'm so glad we did that. And I said, guys, you're here for hours you were in every shot for the yeah. next seven yeah. or eight hours so they never they never did that again yeah i know it's never a, did that a lot again. of work grace uh, sets up the whole idea of a surprise and surprise she's invited sam sam yes yes, yes. um this is what i love about the the overall arc of of deb's stuff in this these two episodes is that she, she's fully meddling but it's mm-hmm, right. It's so for good. It's so for a good cause. Right. And I think it's some of the nicest stuff uh, yeah. that she has in the whole first season. Is I love it too. Is just how how much it shows that she cares about me and how and and how tender she is with him. Obviously, very eventually. Mm-hmm. Right. It's nice. It's really nice stuff. I love it too. Um, and then we get to see her bedroom, and I was like, oh wow, that's where Will lives. I mean, where Will sleeps and yeah. gets dressed. I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. that's so cool. I love when they expand into like, you exactly, always imagine yeah. what it was, but it's there, there it is. It's cool. I have, I, for such a small bedroom, I have just over 400 ties. <laughs> yeah, I know. Which I, which I throw, which I I throw out at, at, uh, at Grace. In that, I um, love that. Um, by the way, another reference to my very close good friend, Maria Shriver. <laughs> when she, when yeah. Grace, every, every family has problems you have to work through. I mean, don't you think the Kennedys had words when Maria married the Terminator? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe and that. I, and there's the most subtle line I have in the, I mean, subtly delivered line I have in the whole episode. I was like, I don't think they really care who the girls marry. <laughs> and I so threw it away. I was like, I see, love I, love when I, I love myself better when I do stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so smart. Super smart. Being too self-aware. Um, the, the guest star that never really was, Karen pops in and says, uh, big news, Leslie Uggams just popped in. Yeah. And then seconds later, and Leslie Uggams just left. Left, yeah. So I love the idea that not only is the room populated with people that don't really know Jack, but Leslie Uggams like, obviously showed up at the wrong party. And, uh, <laughs> and right. Turned around. Um, and then your last line. What, who was Aunt Pesha? Like a, a Jewish mime or something like that? A Yiddish mime? Or a Yiddish, a Yiddish, yes, a Yiddish mime. It's so funny. Um, uh, and then Sam says that they're getting a divorce. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, Deb's like, that's fantastic. I know. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, so Karen gives her funny toast to Jack. Um, but at least it's sincere. I come out and just use the opportunity <laughs> to put down my brother. Uh-huh. Which results in one of my favorite uh, Sean Hayes deliveries. What the hell kind of toast was that? <laughs> Muttered to his. Yes. She follows him in the hall and of course coming back and she says, <laughs> she says, it's been five years and now you're 15 feet apart. Meaning you and Sam. Yeah. yeah. That's like that's like three feet a year. Merchant Ivory films move faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great reference that's, to that time period. I love period that. When I love it. 
uh, if like if a young audience is watching this show now, you don't know what the hell they're talking about. Merchant Ivory films were everything. Every year, another great one would come out. The you know, Room with a View, or, yeah. or and and they were all so good. Had such great English actors in them, but they were they were real slow. Yeah, they were real slow. All right, so um, here's the big reveal. I couldn't wait to tell you about this. Oh, okay. So I'm doing my little speech, Jack, like in the corner there, right? Like uh-huh. Eyes back to me. I read a poem or something in the middle of the yes. poem. Karen helps me figure out that through math. I'm actually 30, not 29. It's a great, which is a great bit. Yeah, which is a great bit. And then Scotty and I are watching this episode together, and he's like, "Wait a minute, rewind." Deborah Messing sneezes in the middle of the take, <laughs> and they didn't cut it out. You want to see it? <laughs> of watch, course, I want to see it. Watch Deborah. Do you? What do you have it there? Yeah, watch Deborah. What do you mean? You see it? <laughs> Do you see that? Yes. Isn't that That's crazy? Hilarious. Wait. There she is. Jack is reading that uh, cute little poem. Uh, and, sn- <laughs> That's and she sneezes. And But so how sweet is that? She didn't want to ruin the take. I know. So she was like, you know, I'm just going to sneeze and that's it. So I don't know if you guys want to watch it, rewatch it again <laughs> during my speech. My memory of Deborah sneezing is that generally she would sneeze a lot bigger than that. So she yeah, kind of, she was, she was trying to, she was trying to save it, which that. was great. And but then I you, think, uh, that bit of you discovering because of the math that you're 30 and falling into the bathroom. <laughs> obviously, there was some sort of uh, pad, crash pad there, but it's it looks so smooth. You just, we don't see it coming. It's very funny. <laughs> it is funny. Yeah. So now we're back in the apartment and Grace is, uh, you know, uh, the therapist between you two. This is, I love this little bit because whenever I'm playing, as I am now, I'm playing a brother to Alex Moffat in, in the cottage. And I'm mm-hmm. a- always aware when actors are cast as, as family, it's mm-hmm. like, I, I overthink it. And yeah. I go, do we really look alike? Can, is anyone going to believe this? And with, with you know, Slattery, he's, he's just, his features are so fine and sharp. And I was yeah. just like... Are, are we going to really believe this? But there's something about the way we sit on that couch on opposite yes. sides of Deborah that I don't yes. you know. Yep. We're, we're, look at that. We're sitting yes. the same way. There's totally about bought it. It made me really buy it. Yeah, for sure. By the way, where does Jack live? <laughs> At this point, we don't know. We don't know. Isn't that we haven't We haven't defined it yet. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine not so far away that you can't just drop in whenever you want. Right. But... Uh, I guess you have a bus pass or something. I don't know. Um, a bus pass. And then, so we get to the nitty gritty and then uh, Grace follows Will out the elevator. You calm down. And I think, yeah. how does it end? Uh, um, she she convinces you, right? To, to, yeah. To, and, and well, to, basically, to, the, 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 she forces the two of us. I love that line which, when she, she realizes that we're not going to say anything without her help. And she finally, oh, oh, yeah, go him. Yeah. But she gets me to go thanks. And she gets him eventually to say thanks. But... Uh, what I like about this is that we, the, the episode still, because it was su- such a big deal, even for a, to be continued, the network would still be probably insisting to the writers that, you know, somehow this episode has to end-ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there is a nice conclusion. I say, thank you, Grace, for doing this. He says, thank you, Grace, for doing this. It could almost end right there. Right. Except they kiss. I know. So great. Is, so great. great. A nice little wrench. <laughs> I do love when someone says, hey, nice little wrench. Thank you. (laughs) Little wrench. Little wrench. Um, And so we get get back in, and I love this because, you know, there's what an incredible cliffhanger. And I love when the audience knows stuff that the characters don't. And you watch it try to unfold. It's so cool. Yeah. I burst burst back in. Now, (laughs) I want to ask Max and David about this in a few minutes, but you have to come up with a reason why Will came back. Turns out right. he came back to get a cat toy that he <laughs> thinks will really help <laughs> calm Jack down now that he's 30, which is so, so silly, so sitcom. Yeah. But it's Jack. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess it could work. It um, could work. Will, you leave. Sam comes out of her bedroom wearing another mm-hmm. one of his nightgowns. I love that. Is it wrong? I feel so good in this. That's what I would I get what I looked at. I, there's there's uh, John in this very long red thing that makes it to his feet. And I'm yeah. thinking he's a f- almost a foot taller than Deborah. How long is that thing on her? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's hysterical. Yeah. 
Yeah, she, very very long. Um, but maybe he maybe he was just insistent and said I I didn't do not want my ankles showing. I don't know. We'll find out when she comes back down the um, road. And um, then the next day, you're on your chunky compact laptop. We didn't have to hide that brand name for some reason. Oh, yeah, I didn't I, notice that. I didn't. Maybe it was so small that they didn't worry about it or something. Yeah. Um, this is a nice setup that, that will lead eventually to the fact that, you know, I, I'm curious about her sex life and uh, I, I'm eventually curious about Sam's because I know he's divorcing. And, and so it's nice that I'm trying to set up something for my, everybody's trying to get laid. Yeah. Um, I loved, I do love this line where she says, you know how sometimes you do something and you get all caught up in it and you know it's stupid, but you don't realize just how stupid until it, 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 until after. And I said, well, sure. I mean, that's how Footloose the musical got made. <laughs> that, I know. Uh, which, that made me so laugh. Mean. Out, so, so mean. So mean. <laughs> made me laugh out loud. And I was like, why are we attacking the Footloose the musical? Those poor people worked hard on that show. <laughs> <laughs> no. But we were good. just mean. <clears throat> yeah. and bitchy. And then yeah. I figure out I can just tell she's had sex. Yeah, I love that. And uh, I assume... It's the guy from Balducci's. You know, another one of these things where uh, probably you and I both had to go, huh, what's Balducci's? Yeah, Because I just totally. did I, all these New York references that I didn't know at the time. I didn't know that at all. Um, and then Grace's office. Uh, here's, by the way, Karen has only been like, boop, boop, like a couple spots. Yeah. Just kind of peppered in. But so now we're, we're, we finally get into some, you know, good Grace Karen stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's great. It's great, Grace Karen stuff, because we realize just how in tune uh, Megan is. This is what I was saying before. Sometimes it's like she doesn't care about anything. She doesn't hear anything. And other times she immediately is in tune with the fact that not only has Grace had sex, but she had sex with Sam. And twice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like freaked out. Really, really funny. Which eventually leads to uh, her getting out and uh, you coming in dep <laughs> depressed as hell. I know. Which is uh, I'm wearing a sad little sad little hat. Yeah, because I'm 30. But, you know, how, how about yeah. this? My, the entrance. Yeah. My entrance is on the, uh, what is it called? The, what elevator? Is the freight called? elevator. The freight yeah. elevator. And uh, I remember Jimmy telling me how to shake my body so it looks like the elevator did it. <laughs> so I'm just, there's no elevator, obviously. Yeah. So I'm crouched on my knees and on action, I just rise up. Isn't that oh, wild? Oh, that's right. Of course, because it's, you know, we're on ground level. That yeah. There's no. So that's, oh, that's good. Look at you doing the. Yeah. Uh, and then I just shook my body rides. like the elevator. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that is wow. Funny. That was all Jimmy. And we get into a wonderful Jack Karen bit of, of charades mm -hmm. uh, that I particularly love when she basically establishes that the word she's looking for rhymes with face, to which Jack says, <laughs> Base, case, dace, jace, waste, nace. <laughs> she goes, honey, those aren't even words. Yeah, I know. know. Jace, waste, <laughs> nace. <laughs> of course, it's Grace she's talking about. And uh, and you guys are so, I love this. You're so excited that, that she fucked Sam and um, that you touched stomachs again. Yeah. Which may only be the second time. Yeah, I think it is the second time in the first season. So everybody... Must have, yeah, I don't think yeah. we went back to that well, though, much, do we? No, I don't think so. I, I think, think that, that was, was it. That, well, we'll find out. I, I, well, I guess I, we I, will. I think, I think you're right. Um, and then, so, back at the apartment, um, you guys are together, which is yeah. nice, you know. Uh, I like that line that I have, it was, we're bonding, my brother and I, say, I'm trying to figure out who's dating. I said, Does she have strong thighs and broad shoulders and is that even something you look for or is that just me <laughs> yeah well, that's love funny that i uh, that's one of the night i love those great little comedy gifts where it's like i i say a line as i'm walking into the bathroom and immediately walk back in with the realization yes. yeah uh, the realization happens off stage funny with the toothpaste how did i wrote down how eric how did you get the toothpaste so perfect around your mouth <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I, I wanted mean, a good Dribble. Uh, I then, in, in my anger, I have a great line, which um, when, when she says, I, "Will I know this is weird?" And I say, "This is not weird, Grace. Gay Republicans are weird. This yeah. is sick." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, true, more, more true than ever at this point. But um, and then you get into the into the codependent. You can't yeah. have you can't have me. I'm yours. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Yeah. And um, which is great. And 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 seeing. This is where the conflict starts and the argument starts, which I, I'm 
completely tuned in anytime you guys do this, like I'm zoned in on like, I love this kind of stuff. I love when, yeah, when you too. and Grace go at me it. Me too. Basically, I say, uh, I, I storm out and, and I, and uh, no, no two sins about it. I say, you betrayed me. Mm -hmm. uh, to Sam, and then I say to her, I said, the fact that you don't even understand where I'm coming from on this just makes it worse. So it's really, it's uh, not our first argument, but it's probably the most serious one we've had uh, up till now. Yeah. And uh, and shades of, of things to come. And Slattery with his very funny, understated, I think that went well. Yeah, <laughs> All right. The same. Uh, and then we're in Grace's office and there's some fun Grace and Karen stuff again. And finally, f one of the, you know, few times Grace actually comes back with a hard hitting, you know, yes. rebuttal. <laughs> Mulan. Uh, yeah, Mulan. Uh, you and should talk, do, and that's one where you got to figure, well, I don't know. Again, this question from Max and David shortly, but, but those lines, particularly the lines where they insult each other's look, um, often came on the day once the writers yeah. had a good look at whatever Deborah was wearing. Right. Um, Moose and Squirrel might have existed, <laughs> but I have the feeling that the Mulan line was strictly was the writers seeing. It. Yes. Maybe, maybe it was Laura Keitlinger or somebody seeing uh, Megan's hair, uh, which was particularly Mulan. Yes, I know. I love that. So funny. And then she Very sums it up with and, and, and puts it right in Grace's face that, you, you know, you're just you are going after Sam because you wish you could have gone after Will, because everything that Sam is, Will is and everything that you wish you could have in Will, you're trying with Sam. I thought it was great. Yeah, it is. And it's, and it's, it's a sort of recurring theme that we talked about a bit with uh, Tracy Post and everything. The idea that how much do the straight women in these straight woman gay man relationships look to that man, particularly if he's, you know, he's handsome or if he's someone. Tracy made it sound like I never had that with, with John. We were, you know, he was my gay best friend. It never occurred to me. But mm. we, we in this show make that attraction that Grace had, certainly back in college, kind of an ongoing thing. And I wonder, that's a good question to ask them. How much was that Jimmy's influence or the network's influence. So remember to keep reminding the audience that Grace really right. wishes he was straight. Right, right. Uh, that's an know. interesting question. Yeah. Um, and then so when we're in Will's office, I love the mirror scene. This is like a mirror scene of the one previous where mm -hmm. now Jack gives a little slap of reality to Will, just like Karen did to Grace. And, uh, you know, I say maybe the reason you're so upset is because you're jealous of Sam. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I've always loved these scenes where, you know, Jack can be as much of an idiot and absolutely not paying any attention to anything, yeah. but then he can arrive with all the wisdom in the world. And right. I love it. In this case, Jack presents it in such a smart way. He right. goes about it by saying, you're no different than me. I, I, I own my people. And yeah. It just immediately makes Will go, well, that, no, that's it's not the same. Yeah, right. And it's very clever. It's very, they wrote Jack. Very uh, wise in this scene. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we're back in the apartment. Grace uh, is watching an exercise, <laughs> some exercise on the TV, and Will comes home. And uh, she, I love, I love, love, love the shorthand. You guys did this a lot too, as it goes on. If, if I remember, like where you do, yeah, the best, the best friend shorthand. I think it was. This was nice timing because it's not. You could have put this line into the pilot, and established for an audience. This is how fast these people work. But I think it would have been a bit premature. This was just a nice thing where we, it was like we we're acknowledging to the audience, "You've seen us do this now for thirteen episodes. We're just going to fast pace this one." And yeah. I, it, it is. A, it was a funny bit. It it's great. Like a funny bit. And then you mentioned uh, you're going to uh, you're going to change and you'll watch the Michelle Lee movie on Lifetime. Yes. And Michelle Lee, by the way came on the show. Michelle Lee came on the show with Cheetah Rivera, maybe mm -hmm. six seasons later. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always fun. I don't remember. We wouldn't have even remembered when Michelle Lee came on to say to her, hey, do you remember when we referenced you? I don't know. I'm sure yeah, I, I know. Remember, but, I wouldn't. I, um, I wouldn't remember. It was so, such a fast joke, but a super funny joke. Because all of those joke, Lifetime and, and jokes. And timely as hell because nothing's changed. Yeah. <laughs> lifetime, yeah. lifetime movies and Hallmark movies. Still all of those themes. Yeah. Plus Christmas. Yeah. Um, um, and then Sam comes back, tries one more time. Grace, you want to come get a drink? And then she declines. Yeah. I felt bad for Grace, but I get it. Yeah. Well, as we as we see, Deborah will get plenty of action on the yes. show yeah. going forward. But uh, yeah, that's a, I think that's a big moment. And just the, I love how Jimmy shot it with just sort of me sort of hovering in the background. She doesn't know I heard it. 
but the audience knows that I know, and it's uh, it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we, yes, we, I like the final line of basically saying to the audience that perhaps wanted to hear that there's still an attraction and there's still hope. It's like, I don't sleep with gay men. Oh, that's too bad, because I do. I do. <laughs> great, uh, great, great. Which is a nice way to wrap that one up. I love it. Those were those two beautiful episodes. That was Big Brother is Coming. And when we come back, we'll have the creators and writers of these episodes, Max Muchnick and David Cohan will be here. Stick around for more Just Jack. And Will. You've heard one, you've heard the other. They've both been on this show, but they were always uh, a two-headed monster. They are Mm. the show. They are the reason we had the jobs we had for so many years. Ladies and gentlemen, the writers of these episodes and the creators of Will and Grace, Max Muchnick and David Cohan, together again. Hi, guys. Uh, Hello, you guys. Thanks for coming back, both of you, together now. Uh, We were talking about... Uh, how exciting it was to do our very first To Be Continued. Right. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Which was so much a part of, of childhood. Every show we ever loved, if it, was, mm-hmm. if it lasted long enough, would, uh, would have a cliffhanger before I even knew what that expression meant. Yeah. Um, did you know this was going to be, that if we were going to bring Will's brother in and sleep with her, that it was going to be a two-parter? Were, you, were you being pressured by the network to do a two-parter? That I don't remember. I don't remember that... We knew it was going to be long. As I recall, I think we asked if we could do it, that we tried to do it in an episode and realized there was no way. And and then said, can we can we do this in two parts? And it was it turned out to be a good idea. That's that's my vague recollection. I, I right. could be wrong about that. Dave, I don't think you remember this, but this was the week that everyone on the show got violently ill. <laughs> I don't remember and, that. Yeah, all the all the writers, all the writers got wow, very very sick. No, because and it was like I had this visceral thing. It was like I was watching that a scene, with, and I also like there were firsts of a lot of things in this episode, like writing poppy stuff on the floor, Sean with that the the thing right in the Williamson Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, right, right, right. And I remember, I remember that was a floor pitch. Sure. But, but I also remember being really sick too. And just so people know, you guys would letter the scenes in order A, B, C, D, E. So when you say yes. A scene, that's the first scene. Mm-hmm. Right. Except yeah. for what are the ones that we don't do? Fingo you. F-I-N-G-O, aren't used. That's kind of fun for people to know because that I, I t- explain why you do, why don't Yeah, I, didn't, don't do I don't think I know that. Because those letters look the same on the floor because when you write the letter, when you're camera blocking, it goes onto the floor. That's right. So an A oh, will look right. like an F and uh, an O mm. will look like another, whatever the other letter is. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, G, H. You know, the, and right. then there's no I. Right, because that could JC. be a one. Right. Thing yeah. you is what mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Oh, wow. the, those are the letters you avoid. Known that. I think yeah. I always assumed if I ever noticed that, that there was a, there was an F scene and you guys cut it before we it got to us or something. No, and then you go into double letters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. All right. No. So, everybody, so everybody was sick. I, I don't rem- I, I yeah, mean, yeah. I didn't know that. Joni will corroborate that. I wasn't sick. I don't get sick. Yeah. Uh, I do not remember the dysentery week here at Will and Grace. Um, but we were wondering about, because we, we, we talked about the, the week before was, I think, the first time we met somebody's family. It was De- uh, Debbie Reynolds as Grace's mom. Mm-hmm. And now we're meeting my brother. Um, how much of this was laid out in your brains in terms of who's got what family? When will they be, if they are? Uh, on the show as characters, it was, is it, or is it just something that once every other week you go, we have to bring in somebody. Oh, let's say that she's got a sister. In in the pilot, we knew that Will had a brother in a pilot. He was referenced. In fact, there was a line that was actually echoed. Exactly. You know, she's morose and controlling and icy. That was um, in the pilot. And it was the reason why when Jack was saying, you got to tell Grace that you have a problem with her marrying Danny. That was in the pilot. And he said, I'm not going to do that. I did that to my brother. Right. Uh, told, oh, told, wow. Look at that. told, and it ruined my relationship. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. And then you went ahead and made the same mistake twice. That was the idea in the pilot. It's like, let's see that. Let's see wow, that. Wow, that's, that's cool. so great. But tell them what it's it was totally about. Forgot. Tell them what it was about. The 
it was more or less we were talking about my first marriage and and um and Wait, I, 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 on the way in we were saying to each other whose story was this we were trying to remember because every single watching these things especially at the beginning it's like oh my god it everything is related to my life or to his life everything hmm. and so i i was asking dave whose story was this and i thought it was mine and then he goes on to say this story no, i remember hmm. saying to max at one point or Max saying to me, supposing I had said to you before you married your first wife, if I had said to you, don't do this, this is a mistake, you know, I said, I probably wouldn't have listened to you. And if you had really gone in hard on that and she had found out about it, there's a really good chance that you would not have been a part of my life because it would have been too uncomfortable, hmm. you know? And, and so that became an element. That became, in fact, one of the key emotional elements in the pilot and then once that was established, we knew we wanted to see what that looked like, you know, and, and, and what that felt like for Will. And then there was also the element of contrasting this, you know, the Jew-Gentile thing between Will and Grace, mm. how, one, how one family would deal with it in an open and messy kind of way, and another would sort of John Cheever the whole situation and just kind of sweep it under the carpet and try to <laughs> pretend that it, and have it manifest Googling in John way. Cheever. But the, and yeah. then my, my memory of it was that story was generated because my brother slept with the last person, woman, that I ever slept with. And wow. took me took me to Figaro on Melrose oh, and wow. told me wow. and and I lost my shit, you know. And naturally, because I'm a good Jewish boy, my mother was at that meal and she was <laughs> like, you know, Jace Max, what do you you know? Why do you have you have no rights to this, you know? And I remember saying, she's mine. Uh, that person is mine, you know. And uh, so I, when all of that those scenes were going on. I just found all that to be so interesting because it's very, very murky. You have no rights to anybody's anything, right? right? Everybody gets to do what they want. But um, I just like that it all came from somewhere. It, and, and you can turn it. Look, I hate the person you're you're marrying, so don't do it. Yeah. Well, I am doing it. And now I know you hate her, so yes. we right. have a problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. And the, the, we mentioned in this episode that, he, that uh, he would leave the Christmas party at my parents' house early if he knew I was coming. And I remember thinking the first time I heard it, because I've watched it twice now, um, it, did, would he leave early because he was mad at me? Or was he leaving early because he was embarrassed as the years went on and I sort of proved myself right <laughs> as they got closer to divorce? Was there a moment where he couldn't face the fact that perhaps I called it? My I thinking was that Ginny was probably there. Yeah, and, and Ginny, Ginny hated and, me. And and just it would be too uncomfortable and, and, and he'd rather, rather than deal with it, rather than say, this is the person I married, you guys need to all work this out, he w it would be easier to just leave. Been there. I was, I was saying before, uh, just before we got on, that I'm always very aware, whether it's a show I'm in or just watching, of people being cast as family, particularly as brother and sister or brother and brother. And I remember at the time going, oh, do I look enough like Slattery? Am I going to, he's so, he's so handsome in a slightly more chiseled East Coast way. But that I found by the time we were sitting on the couch, we were sitting in the same position and that it was like, oh, I'm buying it now. Yeah, I'm buying. yeah. Was he, who did you have in mind? Was he like, that was Tracy Lillian. That, that's that was Lillian Felt. Yeah. Tracy Lillian Felt. So, because I, we didn't really know John Slider. We knew, we had known of his work, but it, we didn't really know him. And she was like, this guy's great. You have to. Yeah. And what was so interesting to me is I didn't know what that meant. And, and to me, when it means restraint, his restraint, yeah, you know, so he was good. so, he was so pulled back on everything in, in such a good way. He, ne there was no forcing he, and, and it really worked. It worked for a guy who was kind of repressed, but still kind of cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I, 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 it wasn't what I anticipated, but it's certainly what, 
what worked. He was for good me. with comedy too. He was you. He, yeah. He generated stuff from the floor up. Things that weren't that easy. Those that all those jokes that just like you have to get them from the ground to mm-hmm. the sky. To yeah. the sky. And the, the you know I don't know that that says you know they they were there were some there were some weak laughs in that show you know but but I thought he did I thought he did a fantastic job. So I have my feelings about what overall just general feelings do you have like when you watch these two episodes? Where you what do you feel? Well, I had an I had an interesting experience watching this because I watched it twice. Also, I watched both episodes twice, and the first time you see it and you and I'm 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 tense and waiting for something I don't I I that I thought was a mistake. Yeah, or that yeah. I wish we had rectified. Yeah, or that same. I wish I had done differently. Yeah. The second time, yeah. when I know it's coming and I can just relax and watch it and let it kind of wash over me, it's so much more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Because that it, makes like sense. The, the the pressure of of recognizing and acknowledging what you could have done better yeah. is gone. Yeah. And now you're just watching the show for what it kind of right. was. That's so interesting. And yeah. it's really enjoyable. Yeah. yeah, because when I, wa- w- w- that's so interesting. I watch it now uh, feeling like I did before I entered the scene. Like I'm nervous. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I was so, <laughs> yes. I, was, I was a mess. Like, I was like, I got to know my line. I got to stand there. I got to, blah, 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 blah. you're thinking of 20 things. And I'm feeling that while I'm watching it. But you're right. As the episode goes on, I kind of let that go, and I really enjoy it. I thought everybody had really strong moments in in, in this. Really strong scenes on, on the yeah. whole. I mean, in terms oh. of the acting, like Deb was fantastic. Did you yeah. She had to really the way she had to, you know, sort of be the liaison, do the diplomacy between the brothers, the subtleties in which she reacted to it all was really good and impressive. Every okay, watch, watch this. Yeah, watch Deb this sneeze. Is, watch, Deb. watch Deb sneeze. <laughs> she sneezes. <laughs> sneezes in the middle of his oh, man. That is so good. That's so more time. funny. I yeah. never noticed it. Yeah. I remember I remember that her so saying, funny. I remember her telling us, you know, I figure if I sneeze during Jack's monologue, it'll bring a little more attention to my character. And <laughs> so I thought that was so kind you know, of her to just keep going. You know what, when, I, when I was watching it, though, you know what um, came across to me was um, how good all of the departments were. No, I, I'm not not just what not just what we were looking at on camera. I mean, in terms of the four of you, but you know wardrobe is so good the the sets are so interesting and intricate and and personal and every single thing in the apartment yeah. everybody uh, cared means mean something you know yeah everybody cared yeah and 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 grace's office was incredible your office was incredible yeah. and and if you just um watch these episodes and step them out to the people that put all of that together and we know all of those people um it, it makes you very proud of it just yeah. just you know on the whole i mean there are some eggy there are some eggy things to be sure but i don't i don't that two parter to me I felt like it was the birth of a lot of things that we did for the yes. rest of the life of the show. I agree. Um, everything from the physicality of, uh, you know, Megan touching Deborah to, mm. to to take a little bit of that laugh away and, and you know, pushing her lips together. And like, <laughs> you know, and I remember like that went on a lot longer on stage than what actually made it to air yeah, because yeah, yeah. the audience liked it so much. Right. And, and, but like Megan sitting on where she sat in that kitchen became a place that she sat. I also right. like that Will, you know, that you open up a bottle of wine and then go to the gym. You know, as but, I do to this day. Yeah. You know, but, but it was, it was <laughs> kind of incredible. Bottle. And but Lori Eskowitz's work is amazing when you yeah. look at it. Yeah. It was also interesting that both that uh, uh, Sean just called it mirroring, but that both Jack and Karen are the cut to the chase wise people yeah. that both recognize uh, in, in the, the same problem in Will and in Grace that yeah. we, that right. we probably wish somehow we could be together, uh, which was always kind of a controversial thing. I remember Tracy Pouse saying, "I didn't want to be with Canali," but oh, oh, but there okay. was, I, thought, I thought that was I thought we walked right up to the line there, and I actually thought for sure that was John and Tracy that insisted on that 
uh, that scene where you guys are in the TV room watching that and you have to ask each other those questions yeah. because it was a little bit like, wait a minute, this is a gay guy and why right. is he being so territorial and controlling over her, you know? Um, and I how long do we keep playing this idea that they, she was in love with me in college, so she might still be in love with me? And I think that, right. that those words at the end of this episode answer the question, really, in, yeah. in a funny way. But in a, in a but I just thought it was interesting that it was Jack and Karen that kind of went, no, you just yeah. wish that he was the straight. I, I, I love throughout the series how you pep, how you peppered those moments in, and you don't make them, you don't do too many of them to to ration them. You know, throughout the whole eight seasons, well, eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was also interesting to watch when you go back, as Dave was saying about what, how you two functioned, uh, how Jack and Karen functioned for, for Will and Grace. Um, and we go to that scene where uh, uh, Karen is going to talk Grace through what she's just been through. And there's that great joke about what's going on with your hair. You know, there's moose and squirrel in there. Right? It's so funny. Mm -hmm. So and, funny. And, but so if fun. you watch it and you watch it like from just the writing technical aspect of it, it got relentless. But that joke was so good. That moose and squirrel joke was so good yeah. that we did it. But in fact, if you watch it, it was the third time that she punched her in the face when <laughs> when when the character was going to her friend to ask her for some help. And her friend is just relentlessly knocking on her, right? right? And so it really felt like it was it was heavy handed in this episode. And I and it was the first time we learned this because then Grace comes back with yep. some lame joke about Mulan, right? Yeah. You know, like the Mulan hair. But it's good and because it, that's one of the, the first times she like, actually ooh. came back. You know? <laughs> that's yeah. right. They they wouldn't let Grace insult Karen. They'd I, let Karen insult Grace constantly. It's such a weird it was such a weird thing. Yeah, yeah. boo, don't be mean to her. <laughs> Wait, I want I want to say one thing about about Moose and Squirrel. Yeah. yeah. Which as I recall was Adam Barr. Yeah. Uh they and um, I think that that is a generational joke, right? Sure. Because that's Rocky and Bullwinkle, which yeah, is a yeah. cartoon right. for, and I bet you younger viewers would, you'd say mo moose and squirrel. Okay, well, that's a funny combination of, of creatures you would find yeah. in the forest. What about, what about <laughs> Leslie Uggams? Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> this it's episode, a, we had a human. We opened with a human Cronin, Cronin joke. joke yeah. Hume uh -huh. Cronin, uh, Joan. I think he he said no one less than Joan Van Ark. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was like it was like the beep. I mean, there there, there are some very talented people that we mentioned, yeah, but but they are just not a, of the moment in any way at all. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I I mentioned to Eric that uh, one of the one of the scenes I was watching, I, I noticed the framed painting over his shoulder and i was like oh i have that in my house now what do you guys what did you take from the set well right there yes is that that's from eric's uh that's from will's bedroom the right the, the dodo bird um it's gorgeous oh, right dave yeah. and i eat lunch every day uh at the dining room table that that's you right guys, oh really uh, yes that's that cool we sit in those chairs and we that's amazing food up that love table. that i have the framed mosaic you know, it's like an orange and white mosaic kind of like oh, yeah. ta tablet thing that mm -hmm. I have. Um, One of my daughters, uh, her desk in her bedroom is Karen's desk and chair. No. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I, I was thinking like... I, Jesus, so he funny. stole everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> I... <laughs> Dave, what, Dave, what if what if you're like I have the Central Perk sign in my office? Mm -hmm. <laughs> different show, different show. Archie Bunker's chair in my bedroom. <laughs> I mean, they were just um, going to put all that stuff into like a. Warehouse. I know, yeah, absolutely. You know? So, um, absolutely. Anyway, well, you guys, thank you. I don't want to take up more of your time. This is, you know, uh, I, hopefully you want to come back. This is so fun. I could do this for nine hours and just talk about the show anytime. I'm seriously anytime. Don't hey, call, Good. pull back the desperation. <laughs> just, I'm not doing anything. Uh, Please. Love you both. Max Munchnik, David Cohan. Thank love you, you guys. for being our guests again. Bye, Fantastic guys. as always, fellas. Thank you, guys. Now, before we bring down the curtain on this episode, let's check in with our listeners, see if they've got a question for us. Yes, yes. This week's question is from Brianna Martin, and they ask, my question is about the TV set. Uh, when you were all watching it, was there actually something playing or was there some kind of lighting trick to make it seem like it was on? Thank you so much for all your hard work on the show and bringing so much love and light into the world as a result. Take care. <gasps> Thank you, Brianna. Eric, you want to take that one? Yes. No, it was a complete, it was a complete fake. We were often looking 
at nothing. Um, and just a little, a little lighting trick. I mean, that's the nice thing about, not, not just because this show is 25 years old, but because it's a sitcom. The effects were real for the audience uh, in, in the building and uh, they were old school. So, yeah. So, so uh, what happened was they put like colored gel mm -hmm. on in front of the box of the TV that the audience couldn't see. And behind it were just lights and they would just flicker. They would switch the lights back on and, and back and forth to make it look like different colors and different action was happening on the tight TV. It's kind of a I cool always trick. I always wondered, did, did people watch this show? I know I did and go, why did they stuff the television in there? Why yeah. don't they just put the television in front of the big couch in the living room? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought that too, but you know what? There's something cozy about that's the TV room. Well, it's you know? cozy because it, it's if, if you put it in the bigger room, there's only three walls. Right. Well, so perhaps that too. <laughs> they were afraid the television would just fall yeah. out into space. But it was funny. But, uh, it was funny to act like you were watching something and reacting to the yeah. television set. It was so weird because we're just looking at gelled, you know, paper or whatever. It was yes. weird. Anyway, that's why we're actors. Thanks for the question, Brianna. And folks, if you have something <laughs> Thanks, you're dying to know about, go ahead and email us at justjackandwill at gmail.com or you can leave us a voicemail at 818-308-4012. 818-308-4012. Next week's episode is all about gaydar. It's yours, mine, or ours. And, oh boy, our guest to talk about it will be Sean's, I've been waiting for this all year, <laughs> Sean's actual human husband, a composer, including for this very podcast, uh, a big Will and Grace fan, Mr. Scotty Eisenogle, will be here as our yes. guest. Yes, and he's real. He's actually real. Uh, not only that, he's an expert. He's an expert. He's an expert on this show, what, uh, and uh, and I want to hear, I want to ask him really detailed questions that only a fan would know. Uh, yes, I'm so excited. And by the way, he was at two tapings of the Will and Grace program. Before you guys were dating? Before we met, before we met, yeah. 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 How about that? Well, that's just my way of reaching out, and this is our way of staying. Bye! <laughs> Just Jack and Will is produced by Smartless Media. Produced, engineered, and edited by Devin Tory Bryant. That's me. Our talent producer is Ann Harris. Our associate producer is Maddie McCann. Invaluable assistance by Michelle Laparo and Nick Dote. Music by Scott Eisnogle, Lior Rosner, and Raina Larson. Although the Just Jack and Will sting is my fault. Executive producers are Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. Executive producers for Smartless Media are Richard Corson and Bernie Kaminsky. Meet you back here next week for more Just Jack and Will. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Just Jack and Will early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen early and ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey.